Hello and welcome to a revamp of an old uh, tutorial series that I had done. My name is Jacob. I uh, did a tutorial series for Blender about two years ago. Just a simple one for real real beginners that had never used a 3D modeling program before and wanted to pick up Blender like, like I was at the time. Well, since then, about two years ago, I really haven't touched it very much. Kind of just looked at some stuff to, to keep up in the loop. And I kind of wanted to get back into it, and I thought, what better way than to revamp my old series and get you guys an up-to-date tutorial for absolute beginners. So I'm going through, and this is going to be my first video. We're going to go over the interface, just go over what every little window does and kind of give you a feel for where things are. And uh, that's what I want to kind of go over today. I'm not going to go over where to download Blender. I figured you already have it installed. Um, you can go to blender.org and find out uh, all you need to know there. Go ahead and download it, install it if you haven't, and then uh, come back and, and pick up this tutorial. We're going to be going over, like I said, the interface today. So the first thing in the interface you see is going to be this uh, this view window. You see the, the things you make. Don't worry about all the, the options. There's tons of options everywhere for now. But the first thing I know I wanted to do is to move this around, this this cube in the middle on this graph. The first thing I want to do when I first open it up. So to satisfy your curiosity, if you were like me, you want to use the middle mouse button on a three-button mouse. You hold that middle mouse button down, and you just rotate it around to move the 3D view window. I wanted to do that from the moment I opened the program, and so I hope that satisfies a little bit of your curiosity. Um, from there, the next video is where I'll really kind of get into making something. Today I just want to talk about kind of what the windows do and, and where to look for certain things. So this, just to give you an idea, is called the 3D view window, what we moved around. Also these options on the left hand side are part of the 3D view window. And you can toggle those on and off by pressing T. There's another set of menus that you don't use very often at least as a beginner, on the right hand side that you can toggle on and off with N. Now the header for your window here, I know you're thinking header is going to be up here, but the header for the 3D view window is actually along its bottom edge. And these options down here along the bottom edge are what you use for a lot of the things you're doing in the 3D view window. Now there's another window over on this top right, this is called the outline window and you can see there's three objects in our outline now we have we have a scene that's the the project we're working on render layers and world we don't have much to do with that right now but we have these three objects in our scene camera cube and lamp you'll see cube is in white because it's selected that's also why it's outlined in orange here in the 3d view window now to select something and i'll go over this again in the next video you right click on it so if I right click on this little circle here, this is actually with a lamp, and you can see it goes orange, you can see lamp turns white, I have a lamp selected. Right click on the cube, cube turns white, outlined in orange, and we have the cube selected. This prism over here is the camera, and you can right click on that to select that. And I'll go, like I said, into more detail about that in the next video. So that's the outline window. To be honest, as a beginner, you probably won't use it a whole lot, except for if you want to select something. You can actually just left click on that thing here in the view window to grab it really fast. So below that, you have, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, and the header for that is long, it's top edge. Below that, you have a uh, properties window, and that takes up the rest of the side and most of the side on the right hand. So this is all the properties of the, as much as they can be, of the currently selected item in the 3D view window. You have things like render properties, you have uh, material properties, object properties, things like that. This is where you would set up, for example, some of your materials, or your textures, um, some of your physics would come in here, and other modifiers that we'll get into in later videos. This is where you'll set up a lot of your stuff in this little properties menu. There's a lot of stuff jam-packed in there. So moving on, we have on the very bottom we have what's called a timeline window. Now this you probably won't use unless you want to make a movie, to be honest. This is to be this is for used for movies. Like I said, it you set up frames. And if you've ever used a video editor or even like an audio editor of some kind where things go along a timeline, you'll you'll recognize this. This is uh numbers down here is the frame number, and it's used to set up an animation based on frames. Uh, its header is along its bottom edge and it has a few options there as well. 
So there's one thing I haven't gone over, and that would be the very top header here. This is actually called the info window, and all it is is a single header. It's got a few special options on it that you might want to play around with, especially as a, as a new beginner. So first of all, I want to talk about this render, Blender Render. And you pull this down and you have Blender Game, Cycles Render, and then you don't know which one to choose or what this means. Well, simply, and I am going to oversimplify here, so if you know more about this, don't, don't get on my case too much, but simply put, Blender Render is the old standby. It's the long-standing renderer that's always been around um, since probably the very start of Blender, I'm assuming. And it's not the best, but it's probably the most stable and can do uh, pretty much everything you want. Uh, it's, it's what we're going to use for almost everything in this beginner series. Now, as a heads up, the Cycles render is a newer renderer that will... It behaves a little bit differently with the lighting. It's newer and it has some fancier options. If you're going for photorealistic scenes that you want to set up and make pictures of, you'll probably at some point want to learn the, the intricacies of the Cycles render. Now, Blender Render is going to be just fine for now, um, otherwise. Blender Game has some uh, physics options and some different aspects to it to use in game logic because you can actually make games completely in Blender. It has its own uh, physics engine and settings and everything. So between all those, we're going to stick with the old standby Blender Render. Again, if you want to go into some really, really hardcore 3D modeling, you'll want to learn the Cycles Render. And then if you want to use Blender as a game engine, as opposed to a, an out, outside game engine, like Unity or uh, even UDK or something like that, um, you'll want to use uh, Blender Render if you don't want to use any of that stuff. If you want to use that stuff, I'd, I'd just stick with Blender Render for now. And that's what I'll be doing. Um, if you have multiple scenes set up, you can change them here. Personally, I've never worked with multiple scenes. I've never gotten that far along. And then uh, this next option over here is to set up some default screen layouts. So if you want to, you can see 3D view full. If we click on that, that really just takes the, the 3D view window and puts it the full width of the, the screen. If we go back to default, that's the one we start with, and that's what I'll be working with mostly. But it, it, we will be using uh, at some point some of these other ones. For example, UV editing, you can see lets us see the 3D view window on one side and then edit some textures and stuff on the other side. We'll get into that in a future video. So uh, for now we're going to stick with the default view here. And then the other thing we're going to look at is in if you go under file and you go under user preferences, there's some really important preferences in here. This opens up a new pane and the first thing I want you to note is the under editing there is a limit to the number of undo steps. Now in almost every program I've ever worked with, to undo something, if you mess something up, you do control, you hold down control and you press Z, Z or Z if you're from uh, a non-US country. So control Z or control Z will get you uh, to undo a step that you did. So for example, I'm going to close that for a sec, I'll be right back. But let's say I accidentally deleted this cube and I didn't want to. That was my favorite cube in the world. So I hold down control Z, it undoes that. So what you can set up in the user preferences is a number of limit, a limit on how many steps you can undo. Now if you are running out of memory on your system, if you're using an older computer, you might want to reduce this if you're working with a complicated model. Um, you may want to increase this if you're trying something risky that requires a lot of steps so you can back out as many steps as you need but there is a hard limit that you set on the number of steps that you can undo while you're modeling now the other two really important issues are for people that are using notebook computers I know when I made a previous tutorial series a lot of people came to, came to the comment sections and they said well, what if I don't have a middle mouse button? How am I going to move things in the 3D view window? Well, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the user preferences, go to input, and you'll want to find this little mouse option called emulate three button mouse. What this does is it lets you use, you hold down alt and you left click to use the middle mouse button. 
Um, this is if you only have two button mouse or um, if you for some reason can't use a, a third button. Um, so use that if you're on a notebook if you don't have a, th a middle mouse button. Mine for example is the scroll wheel. I actually push down on the scroll wheel and use that as the third mouse button. So the last option I want you to look at is emulate numpad. Now what this does, if you guys don't know what the numpad is, the numpad is the set of number keys uh, one, zero through nine, and then some uh, multiplication, addition, subtraction, some arithmetic symbols as well that's on the right hand side of the keyboard. Um, that setup on the right hand side of the keyboard is called a numpad. Now a lot of notebook computers to conserve space don't have a numpad uh, set into the keyboard. So if you, if you want to use the numpad, you want to click this option and what it'll do is instead of using the numpad numbers, you'll just use the normal numbers. Let me give you an, an, an idea about what, why that's useful. In the 3D view window, all of these little squares down here represent different layers. So this cube is in this very first layer. And if I want to go to layer number two, I can just hit, I can click that, or I can hit the number two. And it goes to layer number two. If I want to go back to layer number one, I press one on the normal keyboard. <clears throat> this is not on the numpad, or I can just click that. This lets you separate a lot of the complicated things in case they overlap to work on them separately. Now, if you want, you can actually get rid of the layers on the numbers and use the numpad numbers because the numpad numbers change your view to certain particular views on the 3D view window. For example, on the numpad, if I press 1, I go to a perfect view of the z-axis and the x-axis so that the y-axis is perfectly in and out. Um, same with uh, number 7, uh, number 9 uh, flips that, I believe. And uh, yeah, so all, a bunch of numbers have different types of views. Numpad number 5 will change the view from uh, perspective to orthographic, and we'll get into that in the next video. But just to give you an idea, if you don't have a numpad, you'll probably want to emulate a numpad so that you can switch to some of these perfect views. And then you just you won't use the other numbers to go to the layers. You'll use You'll just click on the layer to get to that layer, if that makes sense. So if you guys have questions, like I said, the next video I'll get into a little more of the 3D view window. But uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. We just wanted to go over that, uh, all the different windows, kind of give you an idea how things are tied together. If you have questions, go ahead and leave them. I do read all the questions, although I'm, I'm pretty bad about getting back and responding to them. Um, I can put these into, uh, answers into future videos, though. And, uh, yeah, so next time we're going to work on the 3D view window. We're going to actually make something, and we're going to learn a little bit about how to switch the views around. So get your user preferences set up. Uh, get your everything how you like it, your views, how you like them, and uh, we'll see you next time.